Hello everyone and welcome to another Fusion 360 live stream. Uh, my name is Brad Talos from Autodesk and today's topic I'm going to be talking about how to create like packaging uh, for any of your designs using sheet metal. So you can see here that I have an example cardboard box and I'm going to show how to go about creating this. Now this actually came about because I actually have a cardboard box that a product that I ordered came in and so I was like hey I wonder if we could make something like this so here's the actual design um, and you'll notice it looks pretty much exactly the same as what I just showed so there's little tabs there's holes in here and we're gonna go through and learn how to make this box inside of Fusion 360 um, now there are quite a few steps so I actually have an outline here that I'm going to be following um, so if you hear pages flipping <laughs> that is why I just want to make sure I cover everything I'm going to be teaching some really cool tips and tricks to speed up the design process of this cardboard box um, I do have Aaron helping me out today so if you have any questions or comments please feel free to post them into the chat window and He's monitoring that and will hopefully be able to answer those for you. So I'm going to start out by um, going into my sheet metal tab. Now I am using the new user interface. Um, we've talked about this previously, but under your preferences, um, under preview, we have this UI preview. Um, and so if you haven't turned that on yet, I highly recommend that you do. I personally really like it. So you can see it actually um, puts these tabs across the top. So I'm going to jump into the sheet metal tab and now you see my sheet metal commands. If I go back to my solid tab, you're going to see your solid modeling commands. And this is very important because we're going to be jumping back and forth between the sheet metal and the solid commands um, doing this design. So the very first thing I want to do is to actually create a material so right here you can see we have sheet metal rules I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and you can see that we have some default sheet metal rules so you can see for example we've got aluminum maybe aluminum that's an eighth of an inch 0.0625 we got steel etc but I want to create a material that kind of simulates cardboard now with cardboard, you can actually bend cardboard, right? And it almost kind of like folds in on itself. Where sheet metal has to do kind of a radius, we're gonna kind of fool the software and simulate how it actually bends using cardboard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick an existing one of these, and you'll notice as I hover over it, it um, allows me to edit the rule, or I can actually create a new rule. So I'm going to click on this new rule and let's just give it a name. Let's just call it cardboard. Okay. Now the thickness I've already measured using my uh, my calipers in this case is 0.076. Okay. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail but we also have K factor um, I'm going to leave that alone. It's set to about 44% right now. I'm just going to leave that. Um, I actually linked in the description of this uh, live stream another live stream that I did on, it's called Unfolding the Mysteries of Sheet Metal, uh, where I go into a lot more detail about each of these commands. So I'm not going to cover everything again, so I'm just going to kind of keep continuing through here. So you can see for the bend conditions, um, the bend radius right here is set to be whatever the thickness is. But like I showed before, we want to kind of simulate it almost like kinking or creasing on itself. So instead of having a pretty large bend radius, we want a very small bend radius. So I'm going to say point like zero one. Okay. Then we have our uh, relief shape. And you'll see this as we go through, but we can do round, we can do straight, we can do tears. In this case, I'm going to, I'm going to set it to straight. And again, you'll see what that means here in a little bit. I'm going to leave the rest of these alone. 
However, I'm going to expand open my uh, corner conditions here and expand open my two bend intersection. So this is where basically two bends that intersect, what is it gonna look like? Well, again, instead of round, I want it to be square. And that's just to simplify maybe the cutting out of this if we're gonna cut it out with like a laser cutter, for example. Um, I don't wanna have round corners, I wanna have square corners. But then you'll also notice this relief size says whatever the thickness is times four. Well, in this example, I don't need to have it quite so big, so I'm gonna change that from four to two. So basically what we did here is we, we copied an existing material called aluminum, and we gave it its own name called cardboard. We specified the thickness, and we specified the bend radius. That's kind of the key thing right here. Then we went through and said, we want our reliefs to be straight and square. And again, this will make more sense as we start creating parts. So I'll go ahead and save that, and you'll see I now have a new material called cardboard. So I can go ahead and close that out. Okay, so now the next thing I wanna do is I'm in my sheet metal tab, and the very first command is new component. So whenever you're creating a sheet metal part, you wanna create them as a component. So I'm gonna say new component, and this should look pretty familiar. You can give it a name if you want to, so I could call this box. But right here, notice it says sheet metal component. So I'm gonna turn that on, and that's gonna allow me to pick which rule I want to use. And in this case, we wanna use the cardboard rule. I'll say okay, and I now have a new little icon. It kinda of looks like a folded piece of material. If I expand that open, we can see we're using the rule called cardboard. And just like uh, in regular fusion, it's a, it's a component. So when I start creating a sketch now, let's just do maybe on this top view, it's going to organize my sketches, my bodies, the origin, etc., underneath this box component. So I created a sketch. Let's go ahead and do a centered rectangle. Now this is important. I'm gonna try and keep things as symmetric as possible because this box is pretty symmetric. What's on the right side is kind of on the left side, etc. So I'm gonna create a, a symmetric rectangle. And according to my, you know, I took some measurements of the existing cardboard box. Um, it's about 10 and three quarters in length by about eight uh, inches in height. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type in those dimensions and hit enter. So 10 three quarters by eight. I'll finish my sketch. And now I'm ready to start to create my sheet metal part. And the cool command here is this flange command. It's actually multiple commands in one. Now, here's a cool tip. If I just you know, click on my profile and right mouse click, that flange command is at about four o'clock in my marking menu. So I don't have to keep coming up to the menu up here to do that. So I'm just gonna come over here and say flange. And you'll see it gives me a preview of what that looks like. And I'll say okay. And I now have a bodies folder underneath my box component. Okay, so let me go ahead and um, I was gonna close that up. So now I have this uh, rectangle, 10 and 3 quarters by 8, and I wanna start folding the box. Now, I typically um, do the most complicated stuff first and then work my way toward easy. Um, now these first two flanges are gonna be pretty simple. Um, but the next ones after that is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to click on this top edge, right mouse click, and say flange. And you'll see it brings up this flange menu. Now I like to start to drag, and you'll notice we get an error. Every time you drag, you'll get an error. And the reason for that is because when it's too small, it physically can't create the preview. So it just says, hey, I, I failed to create that profile. But as soon as you 
get far enough, you'll notice that that goes away. Okay, so don't freak out when you see that error, um, especially when you're doing like, like this preview that I'm doing. Now it's asking for the overall height. And again, according to the measurements, um, it's three and a quarter. So I'm gonna type in 3.25. It gives me a nice preview. And I'm gonna zoom up here and notice how small this little tiny radius is right here. Again, that was because when we created that cardboard material, we set the bend radius to be 0 0.01. So it's almost like we're kind of crushing the cardboard right there. Where if this was regular sheet metal, you'd probably have a larger bend radius there. So you could use sheet metal for creating sheet metal parts, cardboard, uh, plastic parts. So you could actually heat plastic and bend it. If you know what the, the minimum bend radius needs to be for those kinds of materials, you can use sheet metal for any of those designs. Now I'm gonna do the other edge at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and control select both of those edges. We can see how it's creating a bend for us automatically at 90 degrees at a height of three and a quarter. Now we're gonna learn about these bend positions and stuff like that a little bit later. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and change the uh, height datum to be outer faces. Now, again, I'm doing some things here where you might be like, well, why did he do that? Um, definitely recommend watching that other live stream where I talk about each of these uh, um, options here, like the height datum, the bend position, etc. But I'm going to set this to be outer faces. And what that's basically doing is it's saying it's going to be three and a quarter from this bottom face to this top face here. If I had it set to inner faces, it's actually gonna be three and a quarter from this inside face to the top face. And just to be exact, <laughs> um, the overall height of the box was three and a quarter from top to bottom, so that's why I changed that. Um, we'll talk about this bend position a little bit later. I'll go ahead and say okay. And that's basically, we're just starting the cardboard box. Now I could flip back and forth between the video and the, you know, the screen or whatever, but I'm just gonna kind of simplify things here. But we're, we're starting with the design of the box. Let me jump over here, actually. This might make more sense. Um, what we just did is we just created this wall here and we've created the, the bottom here. So we just created this wall. Now I want to create this folded over section right here. And you can actually see it's getting kind of complicated in here, but we've got multiple flaps that kind of fold into this area here. And that's how this box you know, stays together. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do next. So I'm gonna click on this edge over here, right mouse click and say flange. Again, I like to start to drag just to get kind of a preview of what that's going to look like. And using the measurements from the cardboard box, um, this was 0.375. And so you can kind of see when I type that in, it kind of jumped back a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and leave everything alone. I'll say OK. And then the next part I want to do is to basically create the part that folds down. So I'm going to click this edge and say flange and start to drag. And we can now see how we're basically kind of folding this cardboard over. Now I want this uh, height here to go all the way down to here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that face. And again, you'll notice even though I clicked on the face, it didn't go all the way down. And that has to do with this height datum, okay? So I'm gonna change that to be interfaces, but notice what happens now. It's actually intersecting with the model, and this is bad, okay? We'd never want our sheet metal stuff to physically intersect with each other. And so I can see right here it's point I'm sorry, 3.098. Let's go ahead and just take the eight off of there and now we can see that that lifted up just a, a hair off of that floor, okay? And this is fine because it's not intersecting. 
And uh, later on, I'll show you what happens if you uh, accidentally intersect. We're gonna create a mistake here in a little bit and you'll see how we're gonna fix that. So I just removed just a little tiny bit off of that. And again, I'm just gonna leave everything the same and say, okay. So we just started creating this side. Now here's one of the tips that I highly, highly recommend you do when you're working in sheet metal, and that is to unfold it as you go through your design. So I'm gonna say unfold, and it's asking for a stationary entity. What's kind of you know staying flat? So I'm gonna say this guy. And then you can see it says bends, and it's kind of highlighted a couple of our bends in green. Now I could do one at a time, so I could click on any of these, or I could say unfold all bends. And this is what I typically have set, okay? And you'll notice that it laid out flat. So this is good. If it unfolds and lays out flat, we know that everything is good, okay? So I check my work as we go through by unfolding to make sure this thing can physically unfold. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is, it's kind of hard to see on the box, but there's some, some holes right here, so some slots that these little tabs fold down into and kind of are held in place like so. And so we're going to simu simulate that. So what we basically just did is we just created um, this area right here where we, we came across and then we folded it down again. Okay. Hopefully I don't have to jump around too much there, but so what I want to do now is create those holes And this is what I think is so cool about our sheet metal is we can use regular modeling commands Like for example creating a sketch and I'm just gonna kind of mock up my design I want to put a, a rectangle kind of right in here somewhere and Maybe one up here. I'll just kind of line that up do something like that um, now I want to be more precise, so I'm going to hit D for dimension. And let's just make that one inch tall. And let's make it one inch from the edge of the box, because that's how it is on the actual cardboard box. So you can kind of see how it's one inch tall, it's one inch from the edge. And I want it to be a specific width. I want it to be a little bit wider than the cardboard itself, because we want to be able to you know, push that tab into this. So I'm gonna say, let's just do maybe 0 0.02. You can see how that moved over. And I'll do the same thing right there, 0 0.02. And now you can kind of see this rectangle right here. And you can see inside of that, the piece of cardboard. So we have a little bit of extra room there for it to slide down into. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing up here. I'll just throw a couple dimensions on here. Make that one inch also. Um, the 0 0.02. And same thing over here. Now here's another neat little trick. If I place my dimension, I can just click on an existing dimension and it's gonna reference that dimension. So instead of having to type in 0 0.02 again, I could just click on this guy and that one's gonna equal it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and say finish sketch. And now I've got some rectangles here, but they're kind of hard to see. And I've shown a cool trick where you can probe through just by clicking and holding your mouse. And I can grab that profile. But unfortunately, I actually need to grab about three profiles. It's really kind of hard to see there. So another tip that I sometimes do is actually turn off the body. And now you can see just the sketch. And the body is out of the way. And now you can see, sure enough, there's this little rectangle here, a larger rectangle, and a little rectangle there. Well, why is it split into three? Well, it has to do with that piece of cardboard that got automatically projected. So here's another neat little trick. I can go back to my sketch, and let's just click on those two lines and turn them to construction geometry. And so now they're construction lines, and this is all one profile now. It's not being split by those other object lines. So I can much quicker and easier 
uh, click these profiles. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll go ahead and turn the body back on here. Right mouse click and say either extrude or press pull, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna just start to drag down and you can see it's taking those rectangles and machining it or cutting it through the material. Now, how far? Well, just click on the bottom face and it snaps to that bottom face and it sets that distance for you automatically. I'll go ahead and say okay. And I've now created those holes for where we want these tabs to be. So the next step is to create the tabs. And you're gonna learn a, little, a couple of cool little tricks here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is kinda of zoom up on this. Let's work on this front tab right here. And I'm gonna click on that edge, right mouse click, and say flange. Now by default, it's wanting to put a flange along that full edge. So if I were to start to drag, you're gonna see it's gonna try and put a flange along that full edge. Okay, well, we want to just do a little section. So I'm gonna click on there. Um, actually, let me uh, cancel out so it doesn't remember things. I'm gonna say flange. I'm gonna change this and do a two offset. Now what this allows you to do is to actually create the tab wherever you want. And what I typically do is I get it kind of close. So you can kind of see I drag the arrow there. I'll drag the arrow kind of over here. Okay. And now when I start to drag my height, you'll see that it's only putting that tab where these two offsets are. Now the other issue you see is it's going at a 90 degree angle and we want it to go straight down. So I'm gonna change angle to be zero. And now it's actually basically adding some extra material to that edge. Now we wanna be more precise. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this reference and maybe click on um, this face here for one reference and this face here for the other reference. Now that is exact. So it's not giving us any slop or anything like that. So I want to basically drag this back a little bit to give us a, a little bit of extra room. Same thing over on this side. I'm going to drag that back a little bit to give us some extra room. And in this case, let's just do maybe 0 0.02. Let's see what that looks like. That gives us a pretty good gap there. So I'll say 0 0.02. And then the last thing is the overall height. Okay. Um, so we can kind of see that with this arrow here. So another neat little trick is I can click on an existing face and it's going to snap the height to that face. So instead of having to do a lot of measuring or guessing or whatever, you know, where I'm like, okay, that looks close, but it's not quite. All I have to do is get near a face and click or an edge or a point, and it's gonna snap to that face. And you can see we have pretty good clearance all the way around for this tab. Okay, so I'll say okay. Let's go ahead and unfold this really quick just to see what that looks like. I'll say unfold all the bends and let's just click on that and we can see we've got a little rectangle and we've got this nice little tab that's going to tuck down into that rectangle to kind of hold it together. So I'm going to do the exact same thing on this uh, other tab. So I'll come in here and say flange and um, I'll do the two offset. Again, I just kind of sort of get close just to give me a visual of what that's going to look like. I'll start to drag a little bit. And actually, while we're sitting here, you can see the square reliefs. It's kind of hard to move my mouse here, but you can notice how they're square. This was one of the settings we set when we created our cardboard material. Instead of them being round, I told them to be square. That's the result of that. So we'll set this to be zero. 
I'll go ahead and uh, let's clear our references and just click one reference there click another reference here and kind of see what that looks like then I I kind of drag just to make sure I'm going in the right direction I can see both of those are in the negative direction so I'm gonna say minus O2 and minus O2 like that and then finally the height I'll click on that bottom face and boom we're done okay we just created this area that's folded over that has the two tabs I'll uh, unfold again just to confirm yep it that means it's valid and then I just cancel out of my unfold I don't have to undo or anything like that I just hit cancel okay so we've spent quite a bit of time working on this one side we've created some rectangular holes we've created a couple tabs etc and I want to do the same thing over here and you're probably going wow this is gonna be like a two or three hour live stream if he's gonna to have to model all this stuff well here's where it gets cool you can actually use regular modeling commands such as the mirror command and this blows me away I'll be honest I haven't seen other software that can do this as powerful as fusion so I want to mirror what we've done over here to go over here now in the mirror command we by default I think it's usually set to faces but let's go ahead and change this to change it to features and I want to mirror a couple of these features so I want to mirror that slot and I'm basically working my way backwards I'm gonna mirror that I'm gonna mirror the extrude now you can't mirror the sketch so I'm gonna leave that alone and then I'm gonna mirror that flange which is kinda of hard to show but it's this vertical one right here you can kinda of see how it's highlighted in blue and then I also want to mirror this little flange right here so we're actually grabbing more than half of our timeline and we're saying let's mirror that what's the mirror plane well remember when we first started we drew a centered rectangle this is the exact reason why I can now just select this center plane like so and say OK and boom check that out I hope you guys think that's as cool as I do I mean think about how much time it would take to draw another sketch draw those rectangles dimension the rectangles blah 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 we were able to just mirror existing geometry and we're actually going to do that quite often in this design so what should we do let's go back to sheet metal and unfold so I'm gonna click on unfold all bends it lays out flat so believe it or not even though we mirrored this geometry over here it still recognizes that as sheet metal geometry and unfolds it so Aaron's probably gonna say if you thought that was cool give a thumbs up I totally agree <laughs> I, I think that's pretty pretty snazzy myself okay so let's continue on now I'm going to um, in fact I'll jump back to the video here we've created um, the bottom and these two sides now so now I want to start creating the, the front of this box okay and to take a look at this I'm gonna unfold a little bit kind of hard to unfold this guy but it's basically just a, a rectangle with some flaps on it that fold underneath those um, flanges that we just created. I, hopefully that's not too loud, I apologize. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is click on this front edge, right mouse click and say flange. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and start to drag so you're gonna see an issue. Okay, notice what's happening here. We can kind of see how it's interfering with these bends that we just did and that's no good okay the reason for that is notice the bend position is set to inside so it's oops too far it's trying to bend and make this flange be on the inside okay well because it's doing that it's interfering with that other geometry 
If I set this to outside, we can kind of see that that looks a little bit better, but let's zoom up on here. It's gonna be kind of hard to see, but this face is still touching this face right here. And that is no good. We cannot have those touching. So I'm gonna say adjacent, and you see it kind of, let me zoom up there so you can kind of see what's going on here. I'm gonna say outside, you can see where it's at, and notice it actually says the flange is intersecting the body. It'll probably result in being able to un unable to unfold or flatten. So that's outside. Then I'm gonna say adjacent, and you'll see that it offsets just a little bit. Well, what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at the side here and I'm gonna zoom up. So it's basically, instead of having this face be touching this face, it's doing the bend and then creating that face. So let's go ahead and change this to outside. You can see how that's touching and the bend is right there. And we say adjacent. It basically comes to here and then does the bend and then folds up. And this is exactly what we want. We want a little bit of slop um, in our design, okay? Um, so I also want to control where the ends of this flange are. So I'm gonna change this to be symmetric and I'm gonna start to drag. And we can kind of see what that looks like. And again, if I zoom up here, we can see the, the square corner reliefs. Well, I want this cardboard basically to end at this edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that edge and notice what it did. It actually changed the distance. And so it snapped to that edge. Let me do that again. I was out here, notice we're at like 4.3. All I have to do is hover over an edge or a point. It really doesn't matter. I'm gonna click on that face and it snaps to that face. And because it's symmetric, it's the same on both sides. And then finally, I'll do the height. And again, I'm just gonna kind of drag up. How far do I wanna go? I wanna go basically up to this edge right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click right there. And that gives me a distance of, I'm sorry, a height of 3.098, okay? Now, I want this to be just a little bit below this edge because I'm gonna fold in here. We're gonna basically fold this edge in and I don't want it to interfere. So instead of point, I'm sorry, 3.098, let's just knock that 0.8 off and you'll see that that drops down just ever so slightly, okay? I'll go ahead and say okay, and we now have that front edge. Now what we're gonna do is create those side panels that kind of fold into these rectangular uh, regions right here. So let's just zoom up a little bit. I'll grab that edge, right mouse click, say flange. And again, I like to personally drag just to kind of visually see what that's gonna look like and we can kind of see how that's folding in and we have a little bit of clearance here and we've got a little bit of clearance there. And the reason we have that clearance is because of this adjacent bend position. If I were to say inside, obviously that would not work. If I were to say outside, it looks like that would work, but it's, it's touching right there, which is still no good. So I'm gonna say adjacent. According to my measurements, this uh, flap, which you really can't see right now, goes back pretty far, about three and a half inches. So I'm gonna type in 3.5, we can see a nice preview of what that's gonna look like, so you can kind of see how far back that goes. And we'll say, okay. Now, here's a neat trick. I just did this one edge, and I, I made, you know, I typed in some distances and all that kind of stuff. I could say okay and do another flange, or I could come over here and control select that other edge and do both at the same time, which is what I personally recommend. We're kind of doing these two pieces that are the same. So I'll say okay. 
What should we do? Well, let's unfold. Let's confirm that this is still okay. So I'm gonna say unfold all bends, and there you can see what we just did. We just made these two panels that you see right here and here. I'll go ahead and cancel out. There we go. We're back to where we were. Pretty cool, I think. Okay. Now, we've spent some time making the front with some flanges or whatever you want to call them, and I want to put those on the back. So let's jump back to our solid tab, create a mirror. Again, making sure we're set to features, and I usually work backwards, so I know I want that flange there, and I want that flange there, and that's about as far back as I need to go. I, I don't need to do this mirror or anything like that. So I'm gonna select those two features. What's our mirror plane? That guy. And boom, we just created the back of our part. Go back to sheet metal, unfold, and it unfolds, okay? So we know that everything is good so far. Okay, so the next thing is to start working on maybe bringing, so we've finished the back here, let's start working on this top. And again, it comes across and it folds down and it's got some flaps that fold in around and all kind of stuff. So that's what we're gonna do next. So I'll click on this top edge, right mouse click, say flange. And again, we're using basically the same command over and over and over again, the flange command to build this box. I'm gonna to start to drag and I instantly see a warning, which kind of makes sense. It's interfering with this existing geometry. So we're gonna to have to figure that out. So I probably need to offset that a little bit. So let's do a symmetric edge. Now you'll notice there's a, a four different kinds. And again, I cover these in that Unfolding the Mysteries live stream. Um, but basically symmetric allows it to move in symmetrically on both sides. So I'll do that real quick. And then I'm going to click on that face to snap to that face. Now I've mentioned before, we don't want it touching, but I was able to reference that face. And you can see it's a distance of five. So let's make that a little bit smaller. Let's go like 4.97 and you'll see how that kind of hopped in just a little bit. Let's go back to five. We can see that it's touching. And so I'm just gonna kind of knock a little bit off. Let's just say 4.97 or I could do even 4.98. It really doesn't matter in this case. Okay. And then let's set the, uh, the overall height here. Oh, I love referencing existing geometry. So I'm gonna click on that face and we get that result. You can see that it jumped to the correct height. Now you'll notice it says bend position adjacent. Now I'm gonna purposely make a mistake here. I'm gonna change this to be outside and notice what happened. We, I'm gonna, it's hard to highlight, but watch right here. Adjacent looks good. We can see both of those edges. There's a little bit of a gap there. But let's go ahead and set this to outside. And when I do outside, let's kind of look at it from, again, I'm kind of zooming in here so you can kind of see what's going on. Let's do adjacent. You'll see that that's sitting up a little bit higher, right? It's kind of hard to see, but that's sitting up higher than that edge there. I want it to be flush, so I'm gonna change this to outside but now it's intersecting with this other geometry. And let's pretend I didn't realize that. I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay. And it'll actually accept that. Now I'm gonna test my work. I'll come in here and say unfold. I'll do my stationary entity and say unfold all bends, but notice the result that I got. And this is the exact reason I typically unfold after I do a step or two to confirm, did this thing that I just did um, cause problems? And in this case, obviously it did, okay? So how do we fix this? Well, the cool thing is I don't have to undo. 
I can just go back to my uh, flange right here and I could change it to be adjacent, but I want to keep it the way it is. So let's do some timeline magic. I'm going to drag my marker before that flange and you'll notice it goes away because it hasn't happened in time yet. Then I'm going to zoom up here, click on this face, right mouse click, and I want to press this face down a little bit. Now I'm going to over exaggerate, but notice even though I only selected one face, it's actually grabbing all of the faces that it needs to, to move that flange down. Now I don't need to move it that far, but I do need to move it in the negative direction, which we can see right there. So let's just go maybe um, 0 0.01 should probably be uh, far enough. Um, I want to confirm my notes. Yep, 0 0.01. And so that basically just moved it down ever so slightly. I'll say OK. So we've moved that face down. Now I'm going to go forward in time. And there's my flange that was recreated. And it's still set to outside instead of adjacent. So we were able to go back in time and just move this face down ever so slightly to make this work. So hopefully you think that's cool. I love the fact that I can do that um, to go back and make changes. So, okay. Now I want to, um, let me see. We want to start creating the uh, this side, I'm sorry, we want to create some that comes down over this front piece of cardboard and that will allow us to create the side. So I'm going to go ahead and again kind of zoom up here, click on this edge and say flange. I'll start to drag and we can kind of see what that looks like. Now I know from experience that outside looks like it makes it touching that other face, which we don't want. So let's set that to adjacent. And the reason it was set to outside is because it remembered the last bend position type that we did. So this time I'm going to say adjacent and you'll notice how it kind of added that little bit of extra area there. And I want to go ahead and tell it how far I want it to go. Now, I've been clicking on faces, but you can also click on like points or edges and stuff like that. So I'm going to click this point and you'll see that it set the height to that point right there. Instead of all the way down to the bottom, we set it to be right there. Now why right there? Well, we're going to fold some cardboard into this extra little opening here. And if I had gone too far down, it would clash with this other geometry. So that's why I said I want to go to right there. And that is perfect. I'll say OK. So what we're about to do now, I'm not going to show the actual cardboard box. I'll come over here. What we're about to do now is create this flange here. So we just created this folding down part. But you'll notice that we actually need to come to the left a little bit before we do our fold. So another neat little trick. I'm going to click on this edge right here and create a flange. Now if I start to drag, we're going to get some major issues, right? It's going to try and fold in. Well, I want to add the material to the left. So instead of an angle of 90, let's set it to zero. And you can see that it's actually adding material to this face. So instead of like doing press pull or anything like that, I can just add some extra geometry using the flange command. Now, how far do I want it to go? Well, I want to basically line up with this existing face. So let me kind of drag back a little bit. I'll click on that face and you can see how it snaps forward and it lines up with that face. I really love the, the snap um, capabilities where we just click on points, click on faces, etc. 
Okay. Angle is zero. I'll just leave everything else alone. I'll say OK. Then we'll go ahead and click on that edge, flange. I like to kind of preview, so I'm going to start to drag, and we can actually see what that's going to look like. And sure enough, it's going. there's a little bit of space between there. There's some space between here, so we know that that's going to look OK. It looks, oops, way too far. Looks like there's some space between there and there, so that looks good. And we have a little bit of space right here. Again, I apologize for the flashing when I hover over faces or whatever. Okay, so this um, tab that we're creating, I need to now specify the height of that. And it's, again, it's actually fairly large, 2.5. And I'll say, okay. So what should I do? Let's unfold. Now I've been clicking on the bottom face as the stationary entity. I could click on any face. It really doesn't matter. I'll let's just click on this top face. But the key thing is to make sure it unfolds, which it does. And here is that tab that we just created. Okay. Now what's neat about this and the actual cardboard design, it's rounded over because this um, is basically what gets folded in to close the box. And you don't want any sharp edges, but I can't really see that new flange that I just created. So let's go to unfold, but this time I'm going to uncheck all bends. And my stationary entity, let's do this front face, and you can see it highlights all of my bends in green. So I'm going to go ahead and just click that one bend, and you can see that it unfolds just that one, and I'll say OK. Now I can work on this just like it was regular um, modeling. So for example, I'm gonna click on this, oops, this edge right here and say fill it. I'll start to drag so we can kind of get a visual preview of what that looks like. And again, according to my measurements, it's two and a quarter. I'm sorry, two and a half, my bad. <laughs> this next one, I'll zoom up here. I'll go ahead and uh, actually I'll say add a new selection. I'll click on that edge and what this is allowing me to do, this is a neat trick, I don't know if you know this or not, but you can actually have multiple different size fillets in one fillet feature in your timeline. So this is actually a 0.5 for the size. So you can see we have 2.5 and, and 0.5 and I'll say OK and there's only one fillet feature in my timeline. But if I were to edit that, I could come back and change either of these. And, and I like, it's almost like grouping them together. And because these are both kind of on the same tab, that's why I did them both at the same time. So I was able to unfold this tab, add my fillets to it, and now I'm going to say refold faces, and it folds it back in there. I think that's pretty cool. Guess what we're going to do? Because we spent the time doing that, let's jump back to solid, say mirror. What are the features? Well, I'm not gonna mirror the folds or the unfold, so I'm gonna do the fillets and that flange. And I need to make sure I grab that little flange where I added some extra material, which was that guy there, not that one there. So I'm gonna grab those three select my mirror plane. Now, I've shown this multiple times, but I can't click on my mirror plane. Well, I just click and hold for about a second, and now I can probe through. You can see the top face, the inside face, there's my origin, the inside bottom, and the outside bottom. It's like a laser. So, I'm gonna pick on that guy there. It gives me a nice preview. I'll say okay. And let's just zoom up on here, take a look. Let's unfold. Let's do all the bends. And it unfolds. So, so far so good. We are doing very well here. Okay. Okay, we're kind of on um, the, uh, the last legs here. It's kind of hard to see, but let me jump in here. There's actually, let me unfold 
a couple of these guys real quick. So I'll make this stationary. And I'm just going to unfold um, this bend here. We do. So notice it it gave me an error there. Um, so I had to unfold both of those. But now we can kind of see how these tuck in where these other flanges are. And then there's a, let um, me say OK, so it's not highlighting. Um, there's this guy, which is actually tapered, which tucks down and kind of holds the box together also. So that's what we're going to be creating next is this kind of this tapered section. So I'm going to zoom up here and click this bottom edge. Now I'm going to show you a neat little trick. Let's say I accidentally click this top edge and say flange. And when I start to drag, it's obviously going in the wrong direction. Well, you can hit flip right here and you'll see that it actually flips it in the opposite direction, okay? So if, if you can't select the edge or whatever, you can use the flip. Now, I personally like to try and click on the actual edge. That way I know my measurements are correct and everything like that. So I'm gonna grab that edge and say flange, okay, and start to drag. Now, it's really hard to see what's going on right now. Everything's kind of hidden and folded in, and of course I get a phone call. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm going to cancel out of this, and we're going to use a neat little trick. I'm going to go under the Inspect menu and say Section Analysis. I'll click this front face, and this is going to allow me to slice through my design. And I can actually slice back and see inside the box. I'll go ahead and say OK. And now we can see everything inside the box. So now when I click on this edge and say flange, and I start to drag down, I can very quickly see I have an issue. And that is because it's set to adjacent. Well, I want this to be more on the inside, so I'm gonna change this to inside, and now we can see that it's creating that bend on the inside. And I have enough clearance. I also can see how far down I want to go, so I'm gonna to start to drag, and let's just click on that bottom face. But again, I can see very visually that there's something wrong there. And so that is like 3.09. So let's just set that to like, oh, I don't know. Um, let's just try three and see what does that give us. Yeah, so that actually gives us enough um, slop right there. I could come in there and say like 305 um, and get that to whatever I want that to be. But I'm just gonna leave it three for now. Let's just leave it three. And then finally, I don't want it to do the full edge because it's probably going to run into some stuff here. So let's change um, this to be a symmetric edge. And I'm going to turn off my analysis now. And we're still in our flange command. And sure enough, I can see something going on here. So I'm going to start to drag this back and now we can see that that cardboard is folding inside the box instead of clashing through geometry and stuff like that. So I'm just going to click on, for example, this face here, and it snaps to that face. We're at the exact same distance. So you can see how clean we're able to create this geometry. So symmetric. I snap to that face for the, the length of this, and then I was able to snap to the bottom face, the inside bottom face, for the height of it, and offset that just ever so slightly. I'll go ahead and say OK. And let's put that on the other side. I'll say mirror. What's the feature? Well, it was basically just the single flange mirror plane, we'll click on that same mirror plane, say OK, and we should see it on this side now, which we do. Let's try unfolding. 
all the bends. It does, so we know that this is good. Okay. Now, according to the cardboard box that I have, those flanges that we just did um, actually have some angle to them. Again, it's kind of hard to see while this is folded, so I'm going to unfold. I'm going to unfold all of the bends, and I'm going to pick on maybe this bottom face. So we've just unfolded all of those bends. And I can actually work on this in this flat mode. So check this out. Notice it says refold faces. We're going to come back to that, but I'm going to jump over to solid. And I want to add some draft. What's the plane? I'm going to click this little tiny rectangle here, and then I'm going to click that edge. And it remembered, you know, what I had last, but I could say 5, I could say 10 or whatever. In fact, I could add in both of these um, edges at the same time, or faces, I should say. There we go. I'll do the same thing on the, uh, the other side here. So I'll grab that face as my plane, that face as that and that guy. I'll say OK. And I want to round these off a little bit. So I'm going to say fillet. Let's just do maybe like a, a half inch fillet on these corners here. So instead of sharp corners, they're nice and rounded. And again, I'm going to do all four at the same t oops, at the same time. So I'll grab that one, grab this guy, say OK. And I just modified our cardboard box while it was laid out flat. I'll go back to sheet metal, I'll say refold faces, and it's going to put it all back together. And if we were to inspect this again, let's just do a section analysis on this face and start to slice through, we can actually see, sure enough, that, that tapered box that we created, that tapered flange, I should say. Pretty cool. Okay, I know we're at the top of the hour. I've got a couple more things I want to show. So this is going to go a little bit longer, but hopefully you're liking this. Um, you know, definitely make sure you're adding comments in there if you have any questions. I know Aaron is actively answering those. Um, if you like these kind of videos, make sure you thumbs up or add comments. Uh, we do read them, and uh, um, that's what makes us come up with these types of ideas. So, okay, so the last thing we need to do here is there's a tab in the very front um, that kind of holds this whole thing together. And I need to create a, a hole down here. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. Let's uh, refold these faces. Basically, we're going to create this little tab that folds in and holds the whole box together. So that's kind of the final thing. So I'll go ahead and let's go ahead and unfold this box again. So I'm gonna, um, let's go ahead and, well, I'll just unfold one more time. Let me go unfold the stationary all bends. And I'm just gonna create a sketch. So create sketch. I'll zoom up a little bit. R for rectangle. I like to do the centered rectangle. And I just I just want to get kind of near what I think is this, the center here. And you'll kind of see how it snaps automatically right there. And let's just do oh, a two inch by a three quarter rectangle. So I just drew a rectangle on that face. I'll go ahead and click that half that profile and say extrude. How far? I'll just click on that bottom face, say OK, and we just kind of punched a hole through here. Now, we don't have punch commands or stamp commands in our sheet metal yet, but you can basically create any shape you want and use it as a punch. Okay, and that's what I'm basically doing there. And I could always come back and change the size of that rectangle. Um, you know, we could make this to be four inches wide and it will punch through. And that's kind of the cool thing about this. So I'm going to go back to, to two. And I'm going to say refold the faces. So I punched it while it was flat. We're refolding it. And I must have missed, I must have undoed too far. Sorry. Oh, I see why. I uh, got gotcha. you. Just a second. 
Okay. Oops. Let me go ahead and finish my sketch. It was actually part of my extrude. I'm going to let me just go ahead and do both of those guys and say okay and refold the faces. And there is that rectangle. Okay. So now all I need to do is create that little tab. So I'm going to say flange. And again, I don't want to fold the whole face. This is symmetric, so I'm going to go ahead and say symmetric. And let's just start to, uh, to drag this over a little bit, like so. And start to drag in, and we can kind of get a visual reference of what that looks like. Okay. Now, I want to be more precise for this offset here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that face. And you can see how it snapped right to that face. But again, it's a little bit too far. I don't want them touching. So let's just crank that down just a little bit. Let's do maybe like 0.97. Let's try 0 0.98. 0 0.98 works. That looks pretty good. And then the height of my tab is 0.5. I'll say OK. And we've now created that tab. Now, to save time, um, it's actually tapered. But you've already seen that. Uh, where I would just come in and unfold a single bend like so and then I would just taper and fillet those edges so I'm gonna skip that for now just to kind of speed things up here and that is pretty much it let's unfold the whole thing and make sure it unfolds and it does and so this is what our final product design looks like and if I were to uh, switch to the camera, that's pretty much what um, this guy looks like unfolded. So you can see all of the little, yeah, really close up, you can see all the little tabs and everything like that. Okay? So we were able to recreate that cardboard box using sheet metal. Okay, let's um, finish this guy up. I want to create an appearance here. So I'm going to do A for appearance. And I actually have cardboard that I've created myself. Um, if you want to learn how, watch our rendering live stream. Uh, I think it's rendering tips and tricks. Uh, and so I'm just going to drag cardboard on there. And you can see it kind of simulates what cardboard looks like with the specs and all that kind of stuff. So it just makes it look a little bit more realistic, especially if I were to do a rendering. Okay. Now, I'm... I'm really bad at showing how to model stuff and then that's it, right? And we've actually had a lot of comments about like, okay, now that you've made it or designed it, how do you actually manufacture it? And that's why we did the four part series um, creating this bottle opener where we went from design to actual manufacturing. So I'm gonna do something similar with, with this cardboard box. I wanna show how you could create a drawing of it and how you could actually cut it out like on a laser cutter, for example. So to do that, we need to create what's called a flat pattern. So I'm going to say create flat pattern. And notice how simple it is. What's the stationary face? I'm going to click the bottom face and say OK. And what it's going to do is it's going to kind of lay it out flat like we've unfolded it. But notice we're kind of in this flat pattern solid. Now this is what's really cool. We've designed this box to fold together according to the software where we weren't having um, faces intersecting with each other or whatever. So for example, this tab here, we gave it a little bit of extra um, spacing to fit down into this rectangle. Now, let's say we actually want to force this down into there. So instead of giving it a little bit of slop, we actually want to move these faces. So I could say press pull. I'm going to grab both of those faces and drag. And you can see that I can actually make these tabs a little bit wider. And I'm just going to do this one. I'll say press pull. I can also make it longer and I'm over exaggerating so you can kind of see what's going on here. So I just modified this flat pattern but watch what happens when I say finish. 
notice the box is correct. So the flat pattern is almost like, you know, a representation of this that we allow you to go in and make some changes to if necessary. Now, hopefully that's not confusing, but I find this extremely powerful. Like I said, you know, a fusion is it's zeros and ones, right? Things can't clash. They can't intersect or whatever. So we had to design this so everything worked smoothly. But now I can come back and make those tabs just a little bit wider, uh, make them a little bit thicker or whatever I want to do. And it's not affecting my design. It's affecting what's going to actually get cut out. Okay. So that's what the flat pattern is for. It's almost like two representations. And you'll notice right here, it says flat pattern. And when I click on this activate flat pattern, it switches into my flat pattern tab. I could export this as a DXF if I wanted to send it to some other um, software or whatever to, to cut it out on my machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this guy out and let's create a drawing. So I'm gonna go ahead and say drawing from design. I have to save it. So I'm gonna call this uh, cardboard box. And it's gonna create a drawing. Now it says full assembly. Well, I only have one part. So I'm just gonna click on that component and notice it allows me to give it a representation of the folded model or of the flat pattern. I'm gonna do the flat pattern. Let's do maybe like a D size drawing. I'll say, okay. It's gonna create my border for me. And then you'll see a flat pattern representation tied to my cursor. So I'll go ahead and drop that there. I can see the, the different style. I'll go ahead and say, okay. And there is my flat pattern representation. If I were to click on table, and again, I'm kind of going through pretty quick because a lot of this stuff is covered in um, other live streams. But let me make this a little bit larger. I'll say create a table and I'll just drop that here and we can see that it's now gonna number all of these bends and it tells me what direction, what angle, and um, what radius they need to be. So we can kind of see all of them are 0 0.01 because that was our minimum bend radius. I could come in here and say base view. Um, let's do maybe a northeast isometric. And I want that to be shaded or something like that. So we can actually show like what it would look like folded up in our drawing. Now you can't really see um, all of the edges or whatever. So let's go ahead and edit this guy and make our tangent edges visible. And now you can kind of see what that would look like. Okay, so that's how you bring it into a drawing, but let's say we wanted to um, manufacture this. So I'm gonna to switch to manufacture and notice under models, we have a cardboard box and then we have flat pattern. So right now it's assuming you wanna machine this as a solid. Well, I'm gonna activate my flat pattern and now you can see it looks something like this. And again, I'm gonna fly through here. I'm gonna specify my setup. I'm not teaching you actually how to uh, manufacture this, but I'm showing you that you can. So I just created my setup and I wanna do some kind of cutting. What's the tool? We're gonna, let's use a laser cutter in this case. So I'm gonna come down here and pick on my laser cutter. So you can see a really small curve right there. What's the uh, contour? I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that part there and you can kind of see how it kind of highlights everything in blue. And I'll just say, okay. And it's going to create the tool path to manufacture that. So let's go ahead and simulate this really quick. Um, so I'll just go ahead and hit play let me speed this up a little bit. Um, but you can kind of see it's going through and cutting all these rectangles first, and then it's gonna come out and do the uh, profile all the way around. And if I zoom up here, we can actually see that it's cutting all the way through. So you can kind of see that. 
Okay. Another cool thing with that is I could edit that toolpath and under, um, I think it's actually on geometry, yeah, I could even add in tabs so I could specify how is this thing going to um, get held in the cardboard. So I could say let's put a tab here, maybe one over here, one here, and one here, and it's actually going to add those tabs in there automatically. So you'll see when it creates the toolpath, let me zoom up here, you can see how it's going to lift up and go across and just leave a little bit of material there that we'd have to cut with like an exacto knife or something like that. And then lastly, I could duplicate that profile. Let's edit it. And notice the cutting mode says through. I'm going to change that to etch. I'll jump over to my geometry. Let's just clear out the geometry. I'm going to zoom up here and I can now, let me just look at the top here. I can select that I want the, the laser to basically, you know, etch where these fold lines are going to be. So it makes it easier for me to fold the cardboard. So I'm just going to select those three edges like so. And let's move that guy up above. So it's going to etch first and then it's going to cut it out. So let's go ahead and simulate this. So you're going to see it's going to kind of go along here and just etch those guys. And then it's going to go through and cut the rectangles. Let me just jump to the end. So we can see that sure enough it cut all the way through here. But you can kind of see these light green lines is where it just basically etched the cardboard to allow it to fold a little bit easier. Okay, um, I know I went a little bit long on that one. Hopefully you found this useful. I think um, sheet metal allows you to do a lot of things. So not just sheet metal. You can use it for packaging. You can use it for cardboard. You can use it to create complex shapes. There's a, quite a few YouTubes out there, YouTube videos I should say, where people want to like wrap text around a cylinder. And you can actually use the sheet metal module to do that. So with that, I want to thank everybody for your attendance. I hope to see you on a future live stream and have a good rest of your day. Thank you.